Hello my laughing friends, here we are once again at another exhibition. I'm with Mock again, you may remember him from our last little chat, it feels everyone. like only yesterday. Um, so we were talking Bankside last time, the Molly House and the Stews today, we're talking Roman, Roman history, history, LGBTQ plus Roman history, what did they get up to? Male love and female, yeah, female absolutely. and female love, same sex love and shenanigans in uh, Roman London. Yeah, Londinium. Londinium. We are in the amphitheatre, we have to use the word Londinium. So let's, today, let's, exactly. let's get ourselves in context. Thank you for reminding me where we are. Today we're in the Roman amphitheatre, which actually was only discovered in 1988. Wow. When the, we're underneath the Guildhall here, so Guildhall Art Gallery is upstairs. And when Guildhall Art Gallery was being built, uh, they dug down and they found, lo and behold, an entire amphitheatre. Can you imagine how pleased the developers were when they came across oh, this? Yeah. Oh my God, what have you found? <laughs> Cover it up, Phil. Cover it and up quickly. Pick some dust over it. We so can be careful make that when you try and put your conservatory up in Londinium. You never know what you find. <laughs> So yeah, so they, they discovered this amphitheatre, which was, I think, to, to has been dubbed the um, London's Coliseum. So right, right. it was a place of uh, savage fun and games. So you games know? and slaves yeah. and love and excess. Yeah. Bread and I mean, circuses bread all and took circuses. place here. This is an into savage proportions, I right. think. Okay. Um, okay. Slightly homoerotic, perhaps. Slightly as homoerotic. Well. I mean, I've got to admit, I am not the world's number one hot on my Roman history. Okay. I know okay. it's not really what I focus on when I'm mudlarking, but we're here. Let's get stuck in. Lovely. So you're gonna to, you're gonna lead. You're okay. gonna lead. Okay. Well the interesting so you say about not be being hot on Roman history, I think it's only relatively recently, probably hmm. since about the nineteen fifties, where historians have started to really not sidestep the issue of LGBTQ yeah, plus love right. in Roman history. Yeah. You know, even in um, like in the 1950s, the definitive book on same-sex Greek history was published, mm -hmm. and the cover wasn't sent through the post because they were worried. It was 1978. I'm sorry, they were worried that the Post Office Act, which uh, disallowed obscene material to Couldn't be put be in the post, that the cover wouldn't be, you know, would be would be confiscated. So this cover, what did it depict? Well, it, it depicted was... same-sex male love, and they were uh, able to on, put uh, on, a bar, pot, on a pot. On a pot. So on but, but, but you know, in terms of that history perspective, historians just sidestepped it. Yeah. There's a wonderful bit in, in the film Maurice and in the book, E.M. Uh -huh. Forster, where yeah. they're, well, they're translating a line, a, a poem, and he says, and we'll just sidestep the despicable vice of the Greeks. You know, that whole, we, we weren't comfortable talking about our sexuality. Historians and, and edited today, it out. Yeah, and that's yeah. why I do the Gay Aristo, because yeah. there's a whole undiscovered history of LGBTQ plus love. And, and when we think about Rome, mm -hmm. we often think about decadence. And yep. then again, that is a comment and, you know, a, 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 a negative attitude towards the sexual liberation that they had mm. in Rome. Sex led to the decline of the Roman Empire. Yeah. And probably the gays had a lot to do with it. And it was their fault. And that's yeah, why absolutely. it's all gone to... The mm. Christian so, myth, the Christian myth. Uh, Okay, so it wasn't all Caligula swinging from the chandeliers. No, no. There were rules. There was, yeah. There were some rules about it. So, you, you know, obviously we're here in amphitheatre, we've talked about slaves and gladiators. There, yeah. were, there were slaves. Yeah. There were freed men yes. who had been slaves previously. Yeah. And then there were free men. Yeah, what's the difference between... So a free man the... had his civic rights, he'd never been a slave. Right, okay? that was a, uh, a free man. Yeah, and you could become a freed man but you were always, given your papers. You were given to your become... papers, and you, you you were never, you know, as I guess held as highly as esteem as as. But a lot, there were lots of examples one. of freed men who did really well. So because once you were enslaved, that meant you could never be like a free man. No, but you could, you be, could freed. be freed. And the rules right. around same-sex relationships yeah. are interesting in terms of that caste system. So sex with a slave, well, well actually sex wasn't legislated against unless it was adultery. Right. Unless it was sex with the so opposite same, sex. Same sex same wasn't sex. even commented on. However, you couldn't have sex with a freed man. That was the only thing. Two main freed men having sex together. No, no. Having sex with a slave, right. absolutely fine. Because it wasn't necessarily about the sexual act. So terms like homosexuality, gay, bisexual, lesbian, they didn't really exist. What you had then, was about power and mm -hmm. about dominance. So you right. couldn't be the passive partner. If you had sex with another man, you had to be the, the, the more powerful, the top. 
as it were, and yeah. that meant you yeah. kept your masculinity. You could still oh, hold your head up I high. See, that power I and dominance. See. And that's still even today in the it's gay community, like that whole like, idea of dominance. I'm not gay, still I just do it with men sometimes. But they didn't understand gay. You, you did just <laughs> right. have You didn't have you that definition. Close male friendships. Which, yeah. you know, even when, when the Romans invaded, we had the Celts, mm -hmm. they had incredibly close relationships. So close, these male or male relationships. They actually had a version of a marriage ceremony. Right. Where you could Which we touched on before. Yeah. And we'll be doing that on YouTube. We'll be talking about the history of same-sex yeah. marriages. So I mean, that's, that. that's fascinating. It's almost like this definition-less, like, unbounded thing that has no definition, so it can't have any real rules. Well, the or, idea, the actual like, sort of homosexuality is quite a modern term, and all these yeah. all these classifications that we put on to, are to quite modern. Yeah, yeah. And they are helpful now to ensure that we have representation yeah. and that people feel that they're that they who they are are able to present themselves. Yeah. But in those days, actually, just because you performed a sexual act didn't mean that you were particularly of a sexual nature. You were in nature. that box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Although there is lots of evidence that you know emperors, very senior people in the Roman Empire were gay so I think the most famous you might have heard of Hadrian's Wall the Hadrian <laughs> I hope you've heard of Hadrian's yeah, Wall absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure yeah um, but Hadrian was gay he right. had a lover Antoneus. and his lover was Antoneus. Antoneus and Antoneus died he drowned in Egypt some oh. say he was drowned actually deliberately but we don't know right but um, when he died Hadrian was absolutely grief-struck oh. he named a constellation after him oh. He named a city after him, oh, and he made him a god. Oh, he made him a god. So he, oh, until the Christians came until along, the Christians he was worshipped. Came along. He was worshipped as a god. Wow, you know? Antoneus. I don't know. But there's something about his name. Oh, he's Antoneus. beautiful, and there's actually a fantastic bust of Antoneus in the British Museum. So if you want to go uh -huh. check that out online or in person, it's really worth Get looking up. And I love the Museum. idea. Because I'm a hopeless romantic, yeah. that their love is still written in the stars. Oh, in the stars, somewhere twinkling away. Yeah, exactly. that, oh, that's love never not... dies, especially that gay love. That is true, especially, especially. <laughs> I'm missing out here. <laughs> oh no, I, I like that too. With the constellation and the, and the written in the stars. And there are other examples. Augustus had a a pot, like a drinking Emperor pot. Emperor Augustus. Emperor Augustus. Yeah had a pot and I've got it written down here I've got it written down I've got it written what down. Kind of no, I can't remember we'll put it up we'll put it up in the pot <laughs> we'll put it up I love our go-to we'll put it up in the notes um, and it basically had uh, depictions of, of male same sex on it he was very proud of this cup and it was part okay. of the kind of dinner service so again there yeah. was no shame to it it just was a fact of everyday life it was a fact of everyday life in Rome and 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 you know those social norms and customs transferred from Rome to this far outpost of the empire yeah Londonian. yeah i mean i i don't know where i picked this up from but that being like sent over to london it might have even been horrible histories which i <laughs> it's fantastic i love horrible which histories is fantastic i don't know if you know it if, if you get it where you are but horrible histories is this um accessible history program for essentially for kids but yeah, i don't know no, so many adults it. yeah, yeah. it's great full of songs and dances but you get all this history that's easy to digest and it kind of sticks in your brain uh i'll take my commission check later. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm <laughs> looking for it. a guest appearance. Um, yeah, I just remember one, maybe one from one of the films, but it was like being sent to Londinium was almost like a punishment yeah. of like the outpost of the Roman Empire where the weather was rubbish. Like the second class citizens to get. went. Yeah, and yeah. it took a long time to conquer. To, to get in, to get, I can't remember how many attempts. But it was a wet and horrible attempts. place and the Celts yeah. were brutes and you know, yeah. it wasn't so a great was, place to live. No, but I mean, how amazing that we have we have this here, we have these relics, and I've got some pots and things yes. to show you. Yes. So first off, okay, I'm just thinking about how to segue into one of the things you've you've given me a little taster of. These here are do you can do you know what they are? Uh, There's a clue. There's a clue. Okay. Um, it's hard until you see it in context. It looks like sort of a stone box, but... It, it's a ceramic box. Okay. It is. It's a hypercoursed box flue tile. So this is underfloor heating. This is what oh made the underfloor heating wow. rev. So when they wow. had it in the walls, I think, and the floors were stacked on yeah, these Yeah, because the Romans things. did have central heating. I mean, way before exactly. we had them in, in Surbiton. In, in uh, we, <laughs> <laughs> here in Londinium. So all these fragments, these are all fragments of box flue tile. And this was just making me 
think of the baths. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Did you have something to tell me about the baths? Well, actually, in terms of the baths, well, I mean, yeah. it kind of relates and a little bit. I mean, you know, bath houses have always had a bit of a reputation. Yeah. Um, does that extend to like saunas today? Because you've got like bath houses. You've got bath houses, the stews in medieval yeah, London. Yeah. And then you've got today, if someone's just popping out to the sauna. Well, yeah, exactly. You... <laughs> but in those days, actually, you know. prostitution yeah. took place in places like bath houses. It took place in taverns. Um, it took place in bakeries. You should go to a bakery and pick someone up, which, you know, that's a whole new interpretation <laughs> of getting some buns for breakfast, I think, really. <laughs> a baker's dozen. <laughs> a baker's dozen, I love it. Well, Roman orgies. Anyway, you won't get yeah. their YouTube or banners. Oh, However, yeah. they, the prost male prostitutes and prostitutes in general were prized in, 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 in ancient Rome right. and, and over here as well in Londinium. So much so that you could, you could ply your wares in the street. You had a cell that you would stand in front of looking all buff and attractive. Oh, and you could literally I advertise see. yourself and then go into yeah. your little cell yeah. uh, if, you, if, you know, if, you, if you had one set up. But this were... is making me think of um, the Netherlands and oh, yes, sex show today. windows yeah, yeah. and also you know the old Soho that we would have known yeah. from just 10, 15 yeah, yeah. In the 70s and, and, 80s, and more still, yeah. years ago but yeah um, uh, the courts that you sex go down and yeah it's just you know there but they were prized because um, you know they raised so much tax so the government oh, actually loved the fact that prostitutes raised so much tax so much in fact that they had their own holiday so it was bank holiday prostitute <laughs> everyone <laughs> bank holiday party <laughs> um, but you know so wow. it all comes down to sex and money again, in the end and this again, is absolutely it's taxes isn't it sex, sex taxes, sex, taxes death. yeah and death um, and how yeah. as well as sort of um standing out in front of your wares there was yeah. there, there's documentary evidence of how men of a different nature might have presented themselves in those days. So there's right. recordings of how they might have dressed in terms of like, some like the dandies clues. and like the dandies okay, of the here we go. Times. I love linking these. <laughs> yeah. I always link these through because I always say we change, but we don't change that no, much. Absolutely. Well, that's why so. I love in the Gay Aristo looking at history because the kind of the cast of names change, but behaviours yeah. ultimately often remain the same. The play the same. remains the same. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like, like so. in you know in Gay London, the 60s and 70s, and to some extent in yeah. the 80s, people used to wear. Uh, in the gay community wear like pocket handkerchiefs yeah. that were at the back saying you know what sort of thing you liked in those days if you wanted to indicate that you were a man of a different nature you might wear a saffron row uh, so you, the color yellow it's color yellow yeah uh, very expensive you yeah. might wear yet uh, white boots yeah because, uh, white wow. leather boots particularly wow uh, like, or an oriental turban that's Again, slightly interesting exotic, yeah slightly exotic. and actually when you when you when you when you um when you've done excavations, we've in the past, original historians, when they found corpses or skeletons, skeletons that had jewelry on them, mm -hmm. they were assumed to be female. But actually, more excavation, more investigation, is that men were very flamboyant, men were very peacocky, they wore rings, they wore neck rings. Right. Uh, they so they would have had like I like wearing lots of rings like this, like adorned Absolutely. and kind of. Absolutely. And again, in terms of excavation and history, not really knowing what to make of this. So um, we're in the amphitheatre, there would have been gladiators here, mm. there would have been male and female gladiators. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. So yeah. See, I'm missing out yeah. on all this exciting Roman history. And actually, think... in the city of London, yeah. they found two female gladiators curled up oh. in an embrace together. Yeah. Now, to me, that can't be anything but two people who loved each other and shared their life and yeah. their death together. I mean, they would have been, what, companions? Yeah, or, yeah absolutely. But yeah, I mean, they could have been lovers, they yeah. could have been partners, you know. it's. Um, and that's, that's the whole point. When we look at history, so often history is just assumed that there's a straight narrative. Mm. And so by not even asking the question, may they have been lovers? Mm. They may not have been. There may be evidence that comes up at one point that they were sisters or they were yeah. cousins or yeah. whatever it might be, or just best friends. But However, if you are from the LGBTQ plus community, if the question is never asked about where are you represented, then you don't, if you don't understand your history, you can't create who you want to be. Yeah, yeah. But the gladiators, I think, are fascinating because 
gladiators. We've got, you know, from the film Gladiator, these really yeah. macho butch men. Yeah. But often... They'd they just be regular. Well, no, but they change ridiculous names, like really effeminate names. Oh, I see. So, and it, Yeah, <laughs> so this is like a reversal of the, the Molly House yeah, thing we that we had touched on. Well. They had effeminate names, and then they, but their jobs were kind of like Herculean coal heaver. And, so really this rough, is the... Really tough jobs during the day, and then they were... Mistress, you know, yeah, go lightly, quickly yeah. at night or whatever it yeah, might yeah. be. Yeah, yeah, dip candle Mary. Dip candle yeah. Mary. And she was, was she a hodder? Oh no, Tanner. No, she, she was, was a, she tanner, was a tallow charmed. Like, ah. tallow, that's why she was a dip candle. But yeah. Um, so some of so, the Roman gladiators would call things like hyacinthus. And Narcissus. And like really Narciss lovely, sweet smelling flowers for yeah. these really butch men. And I would like to think that as well as having lots of around here female admirers throwing mm. coins for you to find yeah, many yeah, years later, yeah. there were a couple of male admirers going cooey and throwing a few I coins as well. Yeah, I not said this, here you come. <laughs> what oh. else have you got that's Roman? I'd love All to right, see. Well, I've gabbed away. We have got a bit of roof tile here and a bit of roof tile here. So these are known as tegula or tegulae. And they are one part of this system, which was an imbrex and tegular system. So the imbrex is like a half pipe that would sit over. So this would be a big tile with these lipped edges. And they would sit, da, 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 da. then the imbrex would go over the tegular and that waterproofs it. So right. the rain runs off, doesn't go down there. So really technologically advanced. Use, so advanced. And we use this method in many, many buildings today. We use it, that you see them in Italy, you see them in this country, it's still, still going. We, wow. you know, yeah. Super and that advanced. whole sense of the home was incredibly important to yeah. to the Romans and you know yeah. that, that's and, and you know obviously lots of kind of there are places where slaves went and where you know freed men went and where men only went that heart that the amount of investment they put in there to domestic and arrangements is absolutely fascinating. and it's 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 so funny that it kind of dips off so you've got Romans and Rome you know the Empire you've got Pompeii, for example, when you're wandering around there, or Herculaneum even, you see they had like fast food joints, they had snack bars, they've got salons, they've got, wow. you know, all these places wow. that aren't that dissimilar to how we spend our time Mac today. Roman what, burgers. Yeah, Mac Roman burgers. Um, and then what? You get the Middle Ages, you not that long ages, after. Really. You get the Dark you Ages, don't. you yeah. get the Middle Ages, yeah. you get not that long after. And this kind of like, dulling down of senses. Well, it was about decline. Kind of Again, historians have often said that one, you know, one of the reasons that Rome declined is because they were, and the Roman empires, because they were so licentious. Yeah. And they were so, you know, Roman orgies and all that sort of stuff. And again, a lot of that, if there's any discussion about same-sex relationships, it's inferred that that was one of the reasons that they declined. And certainly from about the fourth century, as the Christians started coming in, right. any, of the, any of those kind of societal acceptance of, of same-sex love started to be oppressed and, as, and I, oh yeah, go, go, go. I was saying to you earlier about when when the Christian when Christianity came in they were being martyred obviously they were yeah. being given a hard time too but you were saying then you had people lumped in yeah so the yeah. Romans were kind of persecuting yeah, so everyone they started, so they were like wagging their fingers they started at, to persecute minorities so right. as they got persecuted then minority classes got persecuted we've seen that in more recent exactly. history, exactly. So I thought we? it was a real <laughs> yeah. echo. You know, yeah. when we are under pressure, we will go for the most vulnerable Pick in society. The, yeah. And if you're Get not ready. like us, then you're then we can't stay strong and survive. And that, that, that is, mentality, uh, it's is like still a here. bundling together in us, yeah. isn't it? And like yeah. battening down the hatches. Yeah. And if you're considered to be one of the links that doesn't quite fit, then that's it. You're and out. then that's when the whole idea of questioning same sex. Not relationships, but just the same sex act started to be that you're different, you know, we're, we're going to be this and that way we'll survive it. Right. To the point where, you know, yeah, by the sixth century, there were laws around it that meant you were actually castrated for same sex relationships. Whereas in, in, the, in Roman times when they were here, there were laws about having sex with someone else's wife. So, as you know, were saying, it's infidelity and, and, you know, but whatever else, it wasn't. Um, there was no kind of legislation no, saying... And so often in gay history, what we have to do is look 
look for the absence and try and investigate the silence because a, a lot of our history is actually criminal. So yeah. as an LGBTQ plus man, when I'm looking at my heritage, I'm often having to look at criminal records to understand what yeah. my ancestors yeah, yeah, went yeah, through, which, which isn't great. Yeah. Or I'm looking at gaps and taking inference from pieces of pottery from descriptions of someone who is a bit fancy wearing Things a yellow robe. Things that have been robe. removed or hidden, or there's like when you see a gap in history, yeah. that could very well be, because yeah. it's part of your history. Yeah. And there is sometimes like, you know, an accusation, why do you talk about gay history? Why can't it just be history? And I'd love to get to the point where we are just talking about history. However, there is so much that's been edited out, and I think deliberately we have to ask the questions now so yeah. that young people, when they're thinking about careers in history or, and they're from an LGBTQ plus background, they can see that there were people there before them. And by just asking the question, mm -hmm. I have no written evidence that, that there were, that, that there were you know, that emperors didn't write a letter saying I'm a homosexual. Mm -hmm. No more than Edward II wrote a letter saying I'm no a homosexual. There's just no evidence there that we can go on. There's so, no, but there's inference, there's, there's inference. commentary, there's behavior. And as we said, the names and the characters change, but yeah. behavior remains <laughs> the same. Yeah, it really does. It's incredible. Um, yeah. So let's... What's your favorite Roman find that maybe we don't even have here that you've ever heard of? What's your favorite Roman piece? I think what we need to do with that, because I very sneakily hear, so I don't really go for that much Roman, and I don't know why it is. I think I was spoiled earlier on when I used to do, I did like quite a few bits of work in Italy, in Pompeii, in Herculaneum. And I think I just took it for granted, oh, she's really. Seen it all. She's seen uh, it all. No, no, I have, I have. Do you know what? I really <laughs> haven't. And I think I kind of, because when you're at school, you do what? Aztecs, Egyptians, Romans, Tudors, Second World War, yeah. and that's kind of it. Yeah. Widely, that's. I did the so, Peterloo riots as well. That was very. Uh, you important. see, I did not. So, I think I kind of jumped over that. Sort of took it for granted a bit. But and so now I'm kind of going backwards and getting really into it. Right. These things here, I've got a couple of, these aren't mine, right? So I'm going to say straight away. These were found by Jules, one of uh, a mudlark who is also uh, a member of the Society of Mudlarks and Thames and Field. That's a bit of Samian ware um, dish, which is... What were they served in it? Was it oil um, or This food? is like, yeah, food. So this is like the nice kind of stuff they use to serve food. Um, this is a bit of Samian ware I found. Oh my goodness. And it's got some decoration on there. But what we're going to do... Oh look, and here's... So there, it's not the same, but that's the kind oh, yeah. of bowl. Wow. So these, very intricate. Very intricate. And these bowls, they're fired at a really high temperature, this uh, Samian stuff. They have some of the, the scenes you were describing, the vignettes of male, I, I think, and now I'm thinking someone found one the other day and it might have been, it was very phallic, it was very proud. And I think... Well, Roman society is very phallic centric. Yeah. Very phallic -centric. So this, I'm not saying necessarily this was like a same sex thing. This might have just been like a scene from a man and a woman or whatever, but they had where the break was. It was a man very proudly. <laughs> showing his strength let's yeah, say yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, but what, what we'll do is go and look over there at uh, Richard we'll look just here at um, Charlie's stuff there's some people who've got a really load of amazing Roman stuff uh, best thing I've found probably that same piece of Samian ware I've got a piece of Roman glass at home that I love glass just a piece of shard of glass but it's like from it a yeah yeah it's really aquamarine kind of glass i knew it would be green i knew i knew, I knew. yeah no, it's it like aquamarine bluey, bluey green but you can see yeah it's um i think it might have been from a bottle or some kind of like dishy thing i don't know anyway, i don't know we'll find out well we can um, infer you know you were talking about roman oh, well, i was talking about roman society being phallic centric yes you said you saw this in Pompeii when we were talking earlier. I did, earlier. On, the, on the street corner. So there's two things I love. No, three, four, five. There's lots of things yeah. I love about Pompeii. We all love but it. <laughs> one, one of the things are the road systems where you can see the blocks that stick up from the ground and they help the, kind of, the um, chariots driving around the road system. So you help the traffic. You can also see grooves in the cobbles where the vehicles were turning around the streets. I love that. On the corner of some of the villas and streets and shops and whatever, you see these little tile-shaped 
symbols, like phallic symbols, yeah. and also sexual like acts, horns. and yeah, and you see like real, you know, some quite graphic. Well, they are so uh, in Rome, <clears throat> um, and probably here, they had little horns on the corner of streets, and they yeah. represented Hermes. Yeah, and they also known as Mercury. I, ooh, I don't know. Uh, oh God, look at that! Do you know what? Only because I was looking it up last look night. That. Because. <laughs> That is a really boring segue. We were waiting for Herbie's delivery. Oh. And I was like, who was he God on? Other brands are available. Other brands are available. But he was a... But it was, it was he, he wasn't a God. He was a... a messenger, um, wasn't he? Yes. A messenger of the gods. The idea was that was Homos, uh, Hermes standing to attention. Oh, so it was basically yeah. a palace. Yeah, yeah. On every street corner. So which shows you that they was. were very comfortable with their sexuality in Rome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it wasn't a thing. No, no. Maybe Although there was, there was an element of same-sex relationships that we find difficult and controversial today. Right. And this is the concept that an older man I would see. take a young man. How and it young? Was like sort of fifteen, a uh, youth right. of about fifteen, yeah. sometimes yeah. younger. Territory. And often, lots of the pot, the pots actually yeah. depict a sexual act between an older man and a younger man. And this was seen as as, as acceptable in those days. Obviously, not at all today but it was seen as a rite of passage, mm. that the older man was teaching this younger man. Right. Um, and at, when the younger man came of age, that relationship would end. So it wouldn't have been a disgrace or illegal in any way. Yeah. Um, and that, I mean, there again, there is a whole conversation around sex as, is a social construct. And do in those you, days it was do different. Do you think they knew, though, that they needed a reason they needed to talk away that relationship by saying, this is okay because X, Y, Z. Well, I think, again, it was about or dominance. Do you, it was about right. dominance and being passive. So they couched it in they such a way. Yeah. But I wonder if they had, they knew, again, if they couched it because they the felt history. like, oh, maybe this is a bit. It, it was, I mean, it happened so frequently, you wouldn't yeah. say that in any way that it was controversial. Right. It just was. I mean, actually, Antoneus and Hadrian, that's how their relationship started. Right, and yeah. some people actually say that Antonez wants to move out of that relationship. Hadrian wouldn't let him, Ooh. and therefore he drowned himself. Oh. And it was actually a suicide. Oh, I wasn't seeing that coming. Yeah, no, so, I mean, oh. again, but I wonder whether that's historical <laughs> that's scholars. That's poisoned the pond <laughs> but Historical scholars who there can't oh, accept see. gay love, so, so they have to poison it. it. it yeah. But I think, you know, that whilst we find that those relationships today incredibly controversial, completely unacceptable, yeah, we course, cannot yeah. put our our view of the our view of sexuality on the ancient world, which is why I often say I struggle with terms like gay or bisexual. Because Sappho, okay, she was Greek, a Greek yeah. poet in the six hundreds. You know, she wrote and she's recognised. She lived on the island of Lesbos as a, as a lesbian icon. Yeah. But she wrote poems about men and women. Now they were more sexual about women. She wouldn't have recognised that she was bisexual, but she, she more just... than likely had sex with women. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it was. I guess just how she felt, or what she was attracted yeah. to, yeah, yeah, and she yeah. goes more that way than the other way, and doesn't maybe yeah. the two don't mix, and maybe. Well, maybe they did, did, and maybe just people weren't so worried about classifying themselves yeah. in the way that we are now. Yeah, but and I do yeah. think it's worth saying there's kind of a darker side to uh, same-sex love in Roman times. Right. And, and again, as part of the Gay Aristo, I want to shine a light on all LGBTQ yeah. plus history, even the bits that we might feel uncomfortable about today. Well, it's good to talk about it all, isn't it? I yeah. mean, it's uh, I, I never really shy away from talking about something or admit that actually I know absolutely Nap all about well, we're it, just discovering it's good to be educated about things, isn't it? You know, we're not experts on Roman no. history. We I love. Am. I, actually, I am. Yeah, no. <laughs> I just love history. <laughs> yeah, and gay things. Oh, look, you're sitting on your hand. I am. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> so we um, go and have a look at some yeah. Other let's stuff? go and have a wonder at some stuff. I'm just thinking, have I missed anything that I don't think so? Let's go and check out some people's finds because there are some amazing Roman things here. There's a lamp, a Roman oil lamp there. Okay. There's room. Yeah, let's go and okay. look at some stuff. I want I wonder where that lamp led to at night. Let's go and discover. Oh. <laughs> We're going to find a mortarium, and if we're lucky, Monica will demonstrate its use. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> Here's Monica. Just talking about poppy seed beakers. Oh, poppy, poppy. So the, the poppy seed beakers. Poppy seed beakers. So this one found by Nicola White. Wow. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. But the colour is not quite right for a poppy seed beaker. It's obviously been a fault in the in the kiln process okay. and it's come out a little bit orange and it mm -hmm. won't come out in a nice dark a darker black colour. Wow. Like oh, that. wow. So, wow. There is a is, difference. I can't get my head balls. around it because this is like what reduction. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. this is not reduction, this it's the opposite. Yeah, it, so, so they fired it too high. No, fired this one's been fired too well, 
to be fine, right? But at the last minute, they have to close it off and not let oxygen in. So it goes grey so through, like grey, you get the grey yeah. centre yeah. of a fabric. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So would that then have been discarded or would have been sold at discount? This would have been sold at discount. Wow. This would have been sold Look at at full you. price. <laughs> you, 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 this bro. is Mark, Mark Monica. <laughs> Hello, yeah. Monica. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. And then sometimes when the potter was learning yeah. and he wasn't very good, um, his pieces wouldn't be sold at all. They'd be broken up and chucked out. And these were all made in Highgate Wood. Wow, oh, well, yeah, well, that's where I'm from. Yeah, yeah, North, yeah, yeah. yeah. These are Highgate Wood pieces. Oh my God. I've come home. Uh, <laughs> you're wow. home to roots. Wow. So these and you are just wasters, so this right. is wasters. rubbish that weren't. We're all wasters in yeah, Highgate. Yeah, exactly. And you said he, were potters always male? No, no, no. no. okay. I'm sorry, I'm being genetic, because I'm a potter and I'm female, so. There we go. <laughs> we, we came over to ask you if you might, I don't know if you can demonstrate it with that, but the old mortarium demonstration. Might you? <laughs> okay. So Tell us what a mortarium right. is. This is a mortarium. Oh, you, we you have could, one here. You call it mortarium. 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 Um, mortaria in Mortaria. Plural. That's true. It's yeah. like Hermione, doesn't it? Hermione. <laughs> a mamma sa mata. Mamma sa mata sa bant. Oh, there's a little bit of a 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 bit of normally some fluid, so either a lemon juice or an oil or whatever. So this would be used, you'd grind it all up and then you'd want to pour it into a vessel. This is a nice small one, so you could quite easily pour it, it's not too difficult And to you hold. sit with it in your well, this cross one is legs? Flat. Oh, right. You could sit with it, this one could sit on the top because right. it's quite small. Tabletop you action. You small amounts. If you were cooking for larger groups like troops in the army, you'd have yeah. a bigger mortaria. And then, quite often, they're designed so that you could sit cross-legged like this and you would put the mortaria in your lap and you just away, and you could sit there for ages if it's big you're doing quite a large amount you could be there for quite a while to get the right oh. consistency so you have one really big yeah. arm you know yeah the bus <laughs> might change yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and then when, you, when it's all ground up you want to tip it into a bowl now if it's a bit oily and a bit greasy and you try and do it it's going to be awkward yeah so the, some of the really big mortaria have two little marks there and oh. there, which are like decorative. And people always assume they were just decorative. Right. But they're not. If you hold them like that and you want to pour your oily liquid <laughs> into a bowl, you put your hands there and you tip it forward. So it's just a grip. And it gives you grip. Yeah. So the Romans they have things which are elegant and beautiful. They have the high touch. Purpose yeah, they had it yeah. well before William Morris, but having nothing yeah, in your yeah. home, it'd be beautiful or useful. The Romans had it. This, this to me is incredibly elegant, this, this lip here yeah. as well. Well, this one is beautiful, but it's um, uh, a whiteware pottery. Hello, buffer, buffer, buffer. Uh, and what's all the pitting you told me before, I think? Okay, so from... these are basically bits of grit that are embedded into the surface. The inclusions? And, yeah. Right. Is that and it's coarse to, to make it coarse? Coarse to, make, to, to help with the oh, grinding. Oh, God, they're so small. And how small. old is that? How old is that? Oh, oh gosh, she's got more. <laughs> this is this one. This okay. one same is in. really, really rare because it's the same in Mortarium. Yeah. And this is my one. Can found I, in London. I? Yeah, yeah, you can ah. find it. So this was found in central London. It's really, really rare to find one in... In fact, I've not heard of any other... Same in Mortaria. Yeah. So I'm wondering if it may possibly have been made to order for a very, very rich house. Oh, because very nice. custom. Custom made, because Samian is only ever used in the triclinium, in the dining room, yeah. so that you can have your smart dinnerware. We looked yeah. for it yeah. earlier, yeah. didn't we? We yeah. looked at some pieces of decoration Samian. around it. So probably. this one, well, it, it may not have been decorated, it may just have been We looked at a simple. plain one, one of Jules's yeah. pieces, yeah. yeah. But this, this one would have basically been used at the table, perhaps if individually, if somebody was very rich and they wanted to impress you could basically have sauces made to order for the person for their guests as they come in so you like your sauce with a little more garlic you uh, like your sauce with a little less garlic you can do so you wow. can have that at the table it's so lush it's like being posh gluten free isn't it yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. So the romans really liked pungent spices they yeah. liked a lot of strong flavors astringent flavors yeah um I had a flatmate once called Janet. Janet, if you're watching, hello. She um, <laughs> she did a Roman night, which I wasn't invited to actually in my own flat. Anyway, anyway, she did. <laughs> I'd wear a saffron toga. You've all been to. 
<laughs> she did a Roman night, but the smells were pungent indeed. Nice. Yeah, right. yeah, very intense. I don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't blooming well invited. So I what might have been? Up. Was it with like figs or what? What would have been ground um, up in there? So you said lemon they, juice they, oil. They, oil. You normally use an oil or an acid like to a help base. break things down. Okay. Um, and then it might be herbs. It might be spices, peppers. Um, what they can import so you can also have I, I believe they probably wouldn't have had just one I reckon they would like we have a chopping board so you'd have one for savoury right. one for sweet and, and you said lemon I mean did yeah. they have I, I mean I, I grow imagine. lemons in Wales but did they have lemons I, le would, I would imagine that they would import imported. because they've wow. got the shipping that comes up through it was a the huge yeah, trade yeah it was a massive yeah. trade port yes. Londinium was yeah. Yeah, again that was a real on. demonstration yeah. of wealth you were having something maybe imported from the yeah. motherland from Italy yeah. a lemon then yeah. all the way to the outskirts here where you were having it ground an incredibly yeah. smart bowl. Yeah. It blows my mind that they wouldn't have had tomatoes. That's, yeah, that's true. That's me saying tomatoes. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. They yeah. Wouldn't, oh, I didn't hear you say yeah, that. No, I, I, I didn't. Yeah, no, no, I didn't yeah, they, 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 right. they, didn't. they didn't have tomatoes. Are so you ever tempted to use it yourself? Like, I you know, taro You know what? I have got a photo. When I first got it, I put some garlic in there. <laughs> I remember. And, so, yeah, and I, I set it all out going, not actually going to grind, but at least the, 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 the Yeah, you might get some embedded yeah. river you imagine, coming you get, like, home. Parsley in there and, just, yeah. and some river yeah. goodness. Yeah. But so, this yeah. was so clean when I got it, it looked almost modern. This has caught my eye. I love now that is not mine, that is from Stuart. Yeah. Yes, it's got but a maker's it's got mark. A maker's mark. And there's another one. Uh, so there's another one with a maker's mark. Little so you one. can see there. Hang on, that's oh. one of mine with the maker's mark oh as well. Oh my goodness, Gosh. Nicholas. Look at so that. you can read it. This is M R M. M A M something something Anim. Yes. That would. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, that that's a, that's cool. really good there. Uh, and then. That one, I think it's just a stamp. It's yeah, it's a stamp. Oh no, hang on. One of them is a. Sorry. That's no, that one something. has got a, a yeah. very vague. Oh yeah, it's not gone that I've deep. I've also got some Stuart Sexy Shard. Stuart Sexy, Sexy Shard. Shard. Gosh. So Stuart Sexy I, 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 If I'm allowed. So just to explain, we have um, a responsibility to record what we find. If it's of historical value or interest over 300 years of age, we record it with Stuart, our finds liaison officer at the Museum of London. That was his. This Sexy Shard is his. So here we go. We have actually been talking about sexy shards. We were we were discussing yeah. same sex relationships in Roman yeah. Roman Britain I'm and LGBTQ the Roman Empire. Plus historians. I'm interested oh, in I it for a really long time. I haven't seen time. one on the same yet. But that, that doesn't mean there isn't. It just means I haven't seen. I was going to ask you about because we talked about vases and the, the yeah. Greco-Roman. Yeah the crossover and so those pots you see that are they slipware where they have like discus throw with yeah. the Greek ones yeah. and then the Roman pots you get that are red with black characters oh, yeah. Which I think, yeah, British Museum. I think um, they're the kind of pots you're talking about. Yeah, and when they they're often, depicted. but some of them often were, they often depicted same sex relationships and sexual acts. Yeah, well, there was also a whole different concept about having sort of the courtly lovers, the, 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 the young. The youth. And you That's, could still yeah. have a wife, but you could still You'd have, have right, your Right, we talked young... about that, how some, some of the practices would be controversial today, but we can't bring our yeah. perceptions to it. Yeah. Well, so, oh, the, I see a man well, and a woman. Well, well, yeah. Having a little well, does it, do we know smoochie. if it's a man and a woman? Does it? Is it well, clear? I yeah, I think that, that is. Was a <laughs> yeah, again, again we, we make an assumption. We yeah. don't. Yeah, it's not gender specific. Do, yeah. You can't actually see, and that's the issue around historians. Like some of the one of the first, uh, you know, a sculpture was found 11,000 years BC, and there's an assumption. It's just two figures in an embrace, yeah. and it's always yeah. called a man and a woman, but they're not gender specific. Yeah, so we don't why, know. Why do they have to be? Yeah. We don't know. There might be. We don't know. There's just be, yeah, a dominant just and a passive know. party. That's all yeah. we know. But we've got, so, I've also discovered that I'd always assumed this was a gladiator. He's not a gladiator. He's he's probably Mars. He's oh. a god. Oh. He's standing on a cliff. Oh. He's definitely standing tall yeah. and proud, isn't he? And this one is beautiful. This is the wild boar. With oh, a yeah, gorgeous. Can you see the person? I can see the boar. Yeah, I can see. Is there someone there? Yeah, I can see, yeah, I can see that. <gasps> oh, I thought that was the boar. Oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look, there's, so there's the boar. Look, there's his shark. Yes. There's a person. Is it, there's is a person, person with a... Yeah, oh. there is. With a Are they being trampled there. or are they oh. killing? And is this a... And that's a lion. 
So wow. basically, this is probably one of the gladiatorial games in London where they didn't have the elephants and the rhinos, yeah, yeah. etc. And we had wild yeah. boar. So we had wild boar That's and we had bulls. Incredible. Well, this needs to win, really. So we've got a little competition going. <laughs> well, this, this was found by Nicholas Wood, who was a mud lark back in the 80s. Wow. And his, um, his daughter was my best friend when I was at secondary school. Oh. So when we used to go clubbing, we'd go back to her house and, and you'd have all muddy stuff lying around on the table. Is that how you got into That's it? How, for no, no, you. not even officially. I think it must have just sunk into the back of my head. I didn't. I never even thought about it until I met Emily about so probably about seven years ago, and she said, "You know, my dad used to." I'm going, oh, "Hey, did all you? that muddy yeah, stuff? Yeah, all that muddy stuff." I mean, that is a really table. special. Incredible. Have you shown so the guy here, Andrew? Who, yeah, you know, have yeah, you shown yeah. him? Although he was really excited. That because is so he amazing. He was talking about more fights in the yeah. um, in the amphitheatre. Yeah. He said he's not had a picture of somebody fighting a ball. That's before. Ones that could have taken yeah. place here. Could, could have been right, right here. Right where we're standing. There that is amazing. crazy. And the other thing I've discovered, <laughs> which is really exciting, is over here. Yeah. What I'd always assumed was my Roman pig. Mm. It's not a Roman pig, it's a Roman bloody boar. A juvenile. Oh. Yeah, juvenile. Oh, yeah. So, so this isn't his jaw, but they, they're a good match. It would have gone, yeah, yeah but, but you can see the sometimes yeah, the over the skull has formed there. Because sometimes, have you seen Alessio's yeah. juvenile boar? Oh, right. Here, this there's a join good. and it hasn't fused yet, oh, so it's wow. a really young one. Yeah, easier to catch, I reckon. If easier younger. to catch, so, yeah, yeah. So he'd have made a good dinner for some Romans, probably. Yeah, and uh, last year we were saying they didn't discriminate between the younger and older, but you know, they just catch and catch. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, would have been much more succulent. Yeah, a yeah. juicy well, suckling boar. <laughs> so, little you catch whichever one you blooming catch. Yeah, you don't necessarily get the choice. So, I'm very chuffed about that. Yeah, that's wonderful. Wonderful. And is this, this is all, is this black furnished uh, That's all barbertine. Barbertine. Um, See, so I'm not so hot on this stuff. That's like the little dog. That oh, the rabbits yeah, and the yeah, dogs yeah. and the, yeah. yeah. There might be more of that. We'll go and look over there in a minute. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness. Now these are a mixture what? of quite a few people's farms in here. So these are my coins in here. Some of them have fallen under the big cistercia, so I apologise oh, for right. that. Um, these are my bits of tessera of all different shapes and sizes. Um, some mod, um, mosaic pieces. This one is really lovely. Um, it's got um, uh, antique Rosso. Um, the colour, which basically the was red. imported from Syria, I think. Right. So yeah. This would be very, very, very. And is expensive. it ground up glass? Is that because sometimes they mosaic type the stuff apart from marble? Yeah. Didn't they have like ground up glass colours? They had. They had I, chips of different colours. Yeah, glass. maybe that's. And the, in the the mortar, they had a very oh, special wow. mortar that yeah. has bits of um, brick, bits of ash. To give it strength. Yeah. And, yeah. and the, the Roman mortar is one of the strongest mortars we've got going. Yeah. In Italy, they used um, volcanic ground up. Oh right. Yeah, uh, lava, lava ash. Yeah, because that was that gave an extra strong bond. But wow. this bond, it's, if it's two thousand years old, look at the strength of it. Amazing. And this is my oil lamp, which oh, is God, yeah. absolute. Beautiful oil. So what I was saying earlier about these is so funny. You and Alan Sutty found yours close together, didn't like in time wise. No. Oh. no. Alan found his years ago. Oh, okay. And took it to the British Museum and they said it wasn't a Roman oil lamp, it was a modern import. Oh. So we put it in the bottom drawer. What? And then <laughs> Four years later, I find mine, yeah. and I am so cock a over the top and happy about it because it yeah. is the most yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful. Thing ever. yeah, um, and I absolutely love it. It's yeah. a factory lamp. His is a picture lamp, so it's slightly different. It's got some decoration yeah. on it, hasn't it's got it? Some it's red on it. Yeah. Um, so it looks almost more salient. So how style. do you mean his is for domestic use and yours is for use? What's no, a factory? No, no. What a factory is... lamp just means how it was made. Oh, so right. a picture lamp means it's got a picture on the front. Right, of it. factory is just lamp like stop. Means, yeah, stop. Yeah. So, but when I found mine, he said, "Oh, I found one and it's in the bottom drawer," and they didn't think it was a real one. So I said, "Well, show it to me." So he sent me some pictures. I'm going, "I think they that looks real." <laughs> yeah. He's like, "No, no, no, it isn't. I'm not it really isn't. I've shown it to him." I'm just going, "Well." What a howler! Tape. Why don't you take it to Kate and Stuart <laughs> yeah. and see what they think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went, oh, all right then. Turns out it's a good finding note. Uh, and they've got it on display, yeah. haven't they? Wow. Yeah, it's yeah. A, is it late fourth, fifth, fifth century. Can't remember. But yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Um, Oh, and good it shows for you. Christianity. For oh. So, at the early stage of Christianity. Oh, interesting. World. So, it's quite. So, it's a Christian. Yeah. yeah. 
it's a crossover piece from the end of Very the interesting. But what I was going to say about it was Mark and Charlie yeah. have found yeah. them Recent, quite yeah, recently. recently yeah. So yeah. two come along at once, yeah. don't see them for years, yeah. another two come along. Wow. But actually Alan's yeah, was found yeah, years was before. Years. But they still, normally come along about one every five yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. So. And Mark's, Mark's soda's got two, yeah. like a bit yeah. of one and another. I know. Yeah. Well, the other one of his is a few that's right, with the so two... I, I find it just really odd that three of them have turned up at once. Really it's, odd. In different places, apparently. Oh, right, OK. Appar oh, right. I don't know where. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> Let's, should we go and look at it? Yeah. yeah. Nice to chat to you. Bye. Are we, <laughs> are we being, like, overwhelmed? With, we're, like, drowning in Roman. It. So this... But this is the find. So that's the find, and that's the one you that's the reconstruction. Yeah. But because I'm a sculpture technician, I can look at this, and I can see a, a seam line. I can see even a fingerprint where the potter's pushed the clay in. I can see where a stick has been pushed through to put, make the hole. And you took that and constructed this? Yeah, I, I can read this like an instruction manual. So then manual. you can make a and, and then I know how, to, I know how, that's like telling me how to do it. Wow. So then I made it as a solid form. Sorry, I'm not ignoring. Oh, made yeah, this mould. Um, oh, and then, that's how you... Uh, so then the, the clay gets pressed, pressed into the mould here and here and then the, the two sides are joined together and that's how you make a hollow roman oil lamp wow. and, and what's this one here this 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 one here that's just I'm got just one, one. yeah Wait, so this, this is it's another oil lamp so it's got the same basic thing of a, a an oil hole and a, and a, a nozzle for a wick um, the issue here is that it's a really rubbish lamp. Um, like if I Finally, the Romans do something wrong with technology. Well, it depends how we're going to read it, because this, there's hardly any room for oil. Um, this hardly joins up to here. So it's almost like it's a representation of a lamp rather than a functioning lamp. It's like a toy, maybe. Well, I think there's another explanation. I think it's a, a, a grave good. I, I think... Um, to be buried with... With a, in, with a cremation. To um, light the way in the underlife. Exactly. And so lamps were the most common grave food in, in, in Roman burials. So um, it's more like a votive offering. Yeah. It's, it's a represent... Yeah. So it's, it has a symbolic function rather mm. than a practice. So it's oh, perfect, that's wonderful. perfectly well made. For, for that purpose, but terribly made for for lighting the for, way. For that, yeah. For that purpose. But yeah. this is to guide the guide the way to to the afterlife that, or what to we're the. Assuming, yeah. Yes. Yeah. How yeah. wonderful! I've just noticed something in here that is. Uh, it's a bit. Is, is there a bottom? Is, <laughs> is there a bottom? What is this? And, um, oh. Tell us about <laughs> the bottom. Remember, I said how this was made by pressing clay into a mould. If I turn this over, you can see it's exactly the same. Oh wow! This is a Okay. This is a finger mark where this Take Roman potter who lived in Gaul, who lived in France, right. this yeah. is made in France, he's pressed the clay into a mould and it's done the same on the other side, put the two together and this hole here is to let steam out yeah. um, because if you trap air it, and put it in the kiln it explodes. Mm. So, so that hole, which you also see on guys, um, which you see is on your granny's let... ornaments today, <laughs> yeah, don't you? You have it's those to, holes yeah, to... It's to let steam out. And it's Venus. You say it's the bottom of Venus. Yeah, it's a it's a Venus figurine. Wow. Um, they were oh, mass wow. produced. Um, they were churned out in in Gaul. In they France. weren't salacious. They were just part of everyday decoration. The v yeah, yeah, Venus yeah. They, 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 they bottom on your mantelpiece. Yeah. Um, we'll have a look at guys. We'll see. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, no, that was okay. fascinating. So this this is the uh, fully the full bottom of Venus expanded. Is that it right? Is. is this Venus? <laughs> this is Venus, and, and as Mark has explained, you know she she was a goddess for many different reasons: for fertility, for sailors, for uh, safety on the sea, for Safe victory. Passage and, and, yeah. and when when I when I spotted uh, this, I actually spotted what I thought was a marble. Yeah. And I just rubbed away the marble to pick the marble up, and I realised wow. actually what I actually have found was was uh, this Venus figure. 
Yeah. And, was it um, her elbow uh, or her? Uh, what? No, it was the, it was her buttock. It, it was actually it was the buttock. buttock. Wow. And, uh, buttock in the mud. Buttock, buttock, in, buttock the mud. in the mud. Got to look at the and hand. And you know, the hand's rather oversized. It's it is, very detailed. It's, uh, beautiful. Um, but it's it's most probably well, it's my most remarkable find. Yeah. And a once in a lifetime find. Yeah. That you wouldn't expect to find. And where would you where would that have been situated in the home? That would be potentially it could be in a temple in a little oh. temple because it predates Christianity. Yeah. So it would be like a votive temple within the house that people would worship right. at each day. Like you see now in other religions yes, with other incense religions where they have a little, and yeah, yeah, kind of Ganesh or yeah, something like that. Yeah, exactly. Um, and um, or it could, uh, I heard Mark say, if the um, the Museum of London, uh, of course, has a complete example, and the Museum of London here is a complete example here. Wow, yeah. And they, this has been found from an 11-year-old girl's burial. Oh. So, you know, so that's like the spirit you know, of the mother being yeah. buried with them and, there, you know, isn't it? Other things were found, you know, sea urchins were very often in Roman burials. <laughs> oh, really? I didn't yeah. know that. How um, interesting. So, so it could be a burial figure, it could have just been within a temple within yeah. the house. But things Can like I, the bracelet uh, and the, that's remarkable. That is a uh, very rare. Um, what is that? That's the bottom of Amphora with oh, the right. olive branch yeah. in Preston. Yeah. And Mark, the lovely oh, guy look. next door, is look at that. Wow. Yeah, that is quite. That's quite. That's quite a, very unique. And you, has Mark made that? Made that made representation. This for me yeah. And, uh, very kindly to go together. So that's the bottom of an amphora. That is the bottom. So the, the amphora is here. Yeah. This is the bottom. And so and that very, is the kind of pointy, the pointy end? And one is, yes. Yeah. One has never been found with the impression like that in it. Wow. The, at the pointy end. Yeah. And Mark's tried to demonstrate that. The Whether it's deliberate term. or accidental, I don't know. I mean, yeah. they, it may actually... It doesn't matter. It's is still this, amazing. This isn't a piece of mortaria. It is. Oh my... Most probably I think yeah. The Roman <laughs> Grind away. Yeah. That was mass. That's some. Yeah. Let's so, oh, this is an army one. You'd have I, I think it could be. legs yeah. Yeah. in your legs, grinding, yeah. and the lip. Yeah. doing yeah. the as Monica so wonderfully wow. demonstrated. And there's the gritty. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, and thank that's you. That's the last one that you ought to look at. That one. The the bracelet. Yeah, Roman shale bracelet. The bangle. What was it? Roman, it's a Roman shale. Shale, as the in as in as the material in, of shale, this like slate. is wearing here made of slate there. Yeah, wow. You see? Yeah, I didn't know they were made of shale. Yeah, from Cambridge down in the Dorset. The shale deposits there, like, which is a slate, type of form of slate. Yeah. A mudstone. Yeah. Uh, and that is, your, you might find a small bit, but yeah. find half. No, I've never seen, <laughs> yeah, I've seen, I've seen little bits. You've seen fragments. Wow, yeah, I've yeah. seen fragments, yeah. but not, not so much. So there we are. Wow, Thank my you. goodness Guy, that's me. That's amazing. So you're in the right yes, place with all That's yeah, amazing. No, that, right. that is well, once a lifetime. Well, bless her. She is quite a, quite a remarkable find. Yeah. Ah, that's Super. wonderful. Well done. All right. Very well. Lovely. A few expletives when I found that. You yeah, can imagine. I bet. <laughs> 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 Not so much. Yeah, I did one yesterday about a melon bead, so oh, yeah. I mean, you know. You know, um, you know that that's the other half that I found that Florrie has the other half of. Oh, right, so that is that is a Roman melon bead. I was talking about a more modern one, like an 18th century watermelon bead. This is, so you found and this half, Florrie, and then later... there's with her lovely painted nails, putting the two together. She found it later on? I found mine three months after her. Oh, I love it when that happens, and it does happen. Actually, more often than you think, you find the other matching part, or someone else finds it. It's very strange. What a reunion! And, and, it, and, and it, yeah, it is a reunion. I call it, you know, like synchronicity. And yeah. you can actually see there's iridescence on the break. So it's not as if they broke very recently. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's been out like that for it's a been while. Out a while, hasn't it? Don't yeah. You think? Really interesting. All right. Oh well, thank you for your enthusiasm. Yeah, thank it's you been for fantastic. Showing us. Lovely. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right, Mark, so I think this is uh, as good a place as any to stand. Ooh, Why don't we have a stand with our wow. buddy what? here? What? An well, afternoon. That, yeah, I feel like I've been overcome yeah. with Romanness. Yeah. Um, great finds, great stories. Thank you, you so much. You know what struck out for me? Oh, you're welcome. I've loved yeah. it. What Thank struck you. out for me is whilst they were very different, they were also really similar. They. They, they had domestic setups, yeah. they had relationships, they ground their meals, they had social entertainment. They had entertainment, <laughs> no they had loves, savage. whether they bought those loves or met yeah. those loves. Yeah. I mean, I think today, standing here in the amphitheater, feeling far more connected. Yeah, feeling very Roman connected. History. And it's that thing that I keep coming back to, that we change, but not that much. You know, it's, it's we're kind of the same people, really, aren't we? The Are names change, but the behavior stays, stays the, same. the same. So, all right, well, 
next time. Uh, I don't know where we'll be. But, we'll be somewhere fabulous. Uh, yeah, we'll be somewhere fabulous. Yeah, and uh, until then, whenever that may be, thanks very much for joining us. I'll see you down on the foreshore probably next time. And uh, check out the Gay Arista channel, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. TikTok and Twitter and Facebook. Twitter, yeah, Abba, oh at my Gay Aristo. Goodness me, you're on Come all of them. Me. Yeah. Find all about LGBTQ plus history. Yeah, please do. So, uh, all right. See you next time. Bye.